All right, hey guys, uh, it's Mike here. Gonna be doing a little overview of my extreme water cooling setup. Um, you guys are probably wondering what's going on here, why I have these long hoses coming out of my computer and this big black thing here. Um, so here's kind of my setup. I have in um, my room a closet right next to my desktop computer here. Uh, and unfortunately this Rosawill Thor V2 case does not accommodate a 360 millimeter long by 120 millimeter wide radiator. The largest radiator you can fit is a 240 millimeter radiator. <clears throat> now I'm running an i7-3930K which is um, obviously an Intel's performance line, the LG 20, LGA 2011 socket and that particular CPU creates a lot of heat. Um, so the 240 millimeter radiator uh, just doesn't really cut it. I was running an H100i before with, you know, obviously the um, 240 millimeter radiator up in the top, and I was even running a push-pull setup. I still was not getting temperatures that were in my comfort zone. Um, I am running my 3930K overclocked. Um, with this particular setup, I'm able to run it stably at 4.5 gigahertz, um, no problem at all. I can run it all day long at that speed and don't have any issues. <clears throat> Alright, so let's kind of go over my setup really quick. I've got a Rampage 4 Extreme motherboard in there uh, with an i7-3930K processor. Um, and I've got two NVIDIA 680 GTX uh, graphics cards from ASUS. They're the top edition 1200 megahertz base clock. Um, these, by the way, are, were really good cards. I've been really happy with them. They go all the way up. I've This first one here that I've bought goes, I've had it upwards of 1400 megahertz with no problems. Uh, the bottom one tops out at about 1300 megahertz with no problems. Uh, extremely stable, will run all day long with that, and because of these larger shrouds, it's a lot quieter than most other graphics cards on the market. I've been really happy with them. I've got an AX1200i power supply down here on the bottom. Also been fairly happy with that. Uh, the power monitoring is a big thing for me, and I like that I can see just how many watts I'm drawing and my efficiency and stuff. I've got two Western Digital Caviar Black uh, one terabyte hard drives in RAID 0. And then underneath that, you can barely see it down there, I have a Samsung 840 Pro SSD 512 gigabyte. <clears throat> now for the cooling setup, I have a uh, two laying D5 variable speed pumps, uh, obviously mounted into a reservoir from XSPC. And then I have a Swiftec Apogee HD uh, water block on my processor with half inch internal diameter tubing which flows out through those hoses and over here. Now here's my setup for the radiator. Um, I had to come up with something that would get my 360 millimeter radiator, you know, obviously a nice shroud for it and stuff like that. But the thing is, this case, the Rosewell Thor V2 case, does not fit a 360 millimeter radiator. The largest radiator you can fit in these is a 240 millimeter radiator, which would mount right where these two Noctoa uh, 120 millimeter fans are. Now I was running the H100i, but with my processor running at 4.5 gigahertz, if I was running Prime 95 or folding at home or something like that, it was giving me temperatures in the 85 degrees Celsius range, which is much too close to my max uh, temperature for the processor of 90 degrees Celsius. So I wanted to run a 360 millimeter radiator, but obviously no room. I realized that I had a closet right next to my computer where it sits upstairs. So I was like, well, I'll build a shroud basically for the radiator. And this is kind of what spawned. Um, I figured while I was building a shroud, I might as well kind of do like a neat Venturi type setup. So this actually, the angles on this, this angle here, and then this angle here, you can see there's a slight, slight angle there. Um, is actually made to be a Venturi. If I had high enough speed fans, there would be a, uh, a lower temperature area right where this radiator sits, and it would actually give you subambient cooling. But I'm just running low speed 120 millimeter fans, which is you know, fine for anything that I do. But it's kind of neat to do someday, maybe. Um, anyways, so 
The radiator is an extra thick XSPC radiator, uh, 360 millimeter long, and it simply slides right in the hole there on rails. It will slide all the way in like that. And then unfortunately I kind of crushed my foam here, but the foam seals it off. Uh, so there's no air gap in there. <clears throat> now on the top we have, uh, I ran Cougar fans for all of this just because I got a screaming deal on them. And um, anyways, there are Cougar hydrodynamic bearings. I've been fairly happy with them. I have had a couple of them die on me. Um, this one here, and unfortunately it's missing a fin now. I'm not sure exactly how that happened. I think it must have happened in shipping. It got cracked or something. Um, but this one died on me, and then there was also one on the bottom that's died on me. Uh, otherwise, I've been fairly happy with them. Anyways, they're stacked too deep up here on top, which gives them a higher, um, a higher uh, rate of flow at the top. Um, and then down here on the bottom, they are stacked one deep, except for there's in the middle row. I had some extra fans, so I ended up going two deep in the middle row. <clears throat> now, this whole setup is held up off the ground on these little tiny platform feet, uh, which what it does is it actually it sucks air from down here where it's all nice and cold, and then it sucks it up, hits the radiator, which heats the air, and obviously hot air rises, and so it rises and then hits these fans, and sucks out the top, blows out the top. Uh, really efficient, it works really well, I've been really happy with it. Uh, the nice thing is I can set this whole thing in my closet, close the closet door, and you honestly cannot even hardly hear it, even with all these fans, simply because they're low speed fans, and if you notice, I have foam on the feet, which isolates it, and furthermore, it sits on carpet, and that isolates the noise even more. <clears throat> so, Let's kind of go over what we got going on for power delivery on these fans. Uh, what I have is I have a relay here. These two wires here come off of my uh, AX1200i and then they feed into this relay. When I press the power button, it closes the relay, which then starts up this power supply. <clears throat> this power supply I just had laying around. It was an old junker that I bought. I don't even know how many years ago. I cut off all of the wires, I went in and opened it up, cut off all the wires except for the 12 volt wires, which are what these fans run off of. <clears throat> and I just used all of the connectors that came with the fans to wire them up um, to the power supply. I have checked the voltage at the ends of each of these, you know, these long strips. Obviously the power starts there and travels all the way you know, down. I checked the voltage on the end of them and I still am getting 12 volts, so that's good as far as that goes. I was kind of surprised. I was a little bit worried about the power drop uh, by the end, but not a problem, I guess. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's fairly simple. I mean, uh, everything's on quick disconnect, so I can just pop it out if I need to. Uh, you simply press the power button here, and everything fires up. As I said, you know, I've got this one that's kind of dead here. It kind of spins a little bit. Um, but whole nine yards starts up. Um, the main advantage to having this guy over here is that you no longer have to suck in all of your air that you would normally exhaust for your radiator. So uh, if you think about it, if this 360 millimeter radiator was mounted up in the top of my computer, I would have to suck in all the air for that and exhaust it out the top. Well, that sucks in dust. I mean, you can put you can put uh, you know filters on and whatever you want to do but you're still going to suck in dust. There's nothing you can really do about it. So by removing the radiator and putting it off to the side of the computer, I've actually removed all of that dust that would normally be sucked into the case. Uh, I've seen a huge improvement. Believe it or not, I mean, you can see there's, there's a, a little bit of dust on there. Um, this computer has actually gone about six months now without being cleaned. And I've, I usually run it at least eight to 10 hours a day. And I mean, you can see there's very, very, very little dust on it. It's you know, a really nice setup versus before, even with just my H100i, I was getting a ton of dust just after a week, I'd have to clean the thing out. Um, so anyways, let me know what you guys think. Oh, also, uh, I've been getting temperatures, just so everybody knows, I've been getting temperatures uh, somewhere around 80 or sorry before I was getting temperatures of 80 degrees Celsius and now I'm getting temperatures in the 
60 degrees Celsius, I never see it go above 60 degrees Celsius, and that's with a 4.5 gigahertz uh, speed, well overclocked from like 3.2 gigahertz or whatever it was running stock. I don't even remember now. I've had it overclocked for so long. Uh, anyways, let me know what you think.